dear friends and colleagues, I would like very much to be with you in Iceland for uh, this uh, summit on terminology organized uh, by Termnet. But uh, unfortunately, the measures uh, anti-COVID uh, did not permit yet missions for the staff of the European Parliament. So this is why uh, we decided to address uh, all of you via a video showing uh, our uh, cooperation with uh, universities, Terminology Without Borders, which is uh, an important project of uh, the terminology coordination of the European Parliament, coordinated uh, by uh, our uh, very high-skilled uh, terminology trainees under the supervision of uh, uh, our terminologists of uh, TermCord. And uh, I will uh, give uh, immediately the floor to the coordinators of this uh, project, uh, Sofia Vigo, Angelica Marino, and uh, Emanuela Amendola uh, to present uh, the different uh, uh, sub-projects in the 10 fields in which uh, we work with universities. Uh, before I give them the floor, I just uh, want to uh, stress that the objective of uh, this uh, wide uh, collaboration with by now some 30 universities uh, is uh, to give the opportunity to uh, terminology professors to work with their students on uh, terminology projects uh, in collaboration with the European Parliament, but also to uh, give uh, the opportunity of networking between the universities which can uh, work together on the same project uh, using uh, an application that has been developed by the University of uh, Padova called Fair Term that has already permitted some common projects uh, between several universities uh, in uh, uh, several languages. Thank you very much. I hope to see you soon in one of the upcoming uh, conferences, uh, some of them uh, in my country, in Athens and in Rhodes. And uh, I wish uh, a lot of success in uh, your uh, conference for those who could make it to be today in Iceland. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, my colleagues have the floor. Hello, everyone. My name is Sofia Vigo, and I am one of the terminology trainees in the Terminology Coordination Unit of the European Parliament. And today, together with my colleague Angelica, we will show you uh, our project Terminology Without Borders. Um, you can see now on the screen our web page, yourterm.eu. Uh, Terminology Without Borders is a collaboration that TermCard has um, with uh, several universities. Uh, we have been collaborating for the past few years with more than 20 partners and we always uh, um, expand uh, our network. Uh, the Terminology Without Borders uh, aims uh, at uh, uh, enhance communication in uh, given domains by tailoring terminology to the citizens' need, need through the creation of multilingual glossaries that are created by uh, partner universities and individual partners as well. Um, if you scroll down on our website, you can have a, a quick presentation of the project and also of the workflow, uh, meaning how universities can participate and what they have to do uh, when they participate in Terminology Without Borders. Basically, they can uh, decide how to carry out their project because it really depends on the aims of the professor 
who uh, decides to take part in terminology without borders. So this means that um, students uh, and universities can create a project from scratch. And in this case, they will have to create uh, a corpus of text and then extract the terminology for, from that text. And um, they can also find equivalents and they can work in the language that they prefer. Um, otherwise, they can decide to uh, work in an already existing project that I will show you in a few seconds. And in this case, they will only um, find equivalents in a language of choice. Terminology Without Borders is open not only to uh, the 24 official, official languages of the European uh, Union, but to all languages. So uh, there are no limits from this point of view. Um, even uh, if you decide to create a corpus and create a project from scratch, or if you decide to work on a already existing project, uh, you uh, universities always have to um, have their work checked by experts in each field, uh, so that we can assure the, um, the value of the terminology that was uh, found. Uh, after that, uh, universities send us uh, their tables and we publish, we publish them on a website. And uh, the last step is that the tables are checked also by terminologists in the European um, Parliament and uh, terms are inserted into YAT. So Terminology Without Borders also aims at enriching YAT our multilingual uh, terminology um, database. Now, as you can see here, uh, we are currently active in 10 different domains, medicine, environment, culture, women's rights, legislation, maritime domain, education, food technology, and finance. Uh, each one of these domains contain uh, several multilingual glossaries that you can see here. Each one of these clickable uh, links uh, um, leads you to the multilingual glossary that uh, Angelica, my colleague Angelica, uh, will show you just in a few minutes. So you have a, uh, each page is built up in the same way. So you have uh, a quick uh, presentation of the of the domain and then you will have uh, all the glossaries together with a presentation of the subfield. Now, each one of the each uh, uh, one of the, uh, our partners are uh, is provided also with uh, tools, so that they can carry out the research in the best way possible. Uh, we always suggest our partners to use the third term web application or a um, table that uh, we created that mirrors completely the third term web application. Uh, this application is an application for terminology management uh, developed by the uh, University of Padua. And uh, with this application, it is possible to work in the 24 official European languages uh, plus uh, Turkish and Russian also. Uh, after that, we also suggest uh, uh, some other um, platform, for example, AntConc or Sketch Engine. Uh, as you know, uh, these platforms are both free. Uh, some of them uh, need, a, need, need a subscription. So um, we give uh, many suggestions in order to um, let uh, to our partners decide uh, which one is the best uh, for them. So now this uh, toolbox section, you can find it in our main web page, is here. Uh, right above, you have another section that is dedicated to the committee and coordinators of terminology, of terminology without borders. Uh, if you click here, you will see uh, all the project coordinators. Uh, you will have uh, general supervisors. And then uh, we have uh, um, trainees, like for example, Angelica and me, who are in charge of uh, one of the domains, one or more domains in terminology without borders. So for example, if you want to, uh, if someone wants to participate in your term edu, uh, it only takes to click on one of the names that, you that, that it is found here and uh, contact us directly. 
Uh, we also have a steering committee. You can find the names here. Uh, and the steering committee um, meet like twice a year uh, in order to uh, discuss about terminology without borders, about methodologies, in order to um, always um, improve uh, our the experience of uh, universities. Okay, this was a, a, a quick overview of uh, terminology without borders and of uh, our web page. So now I will stop sharing and uh, I will uh, leave the floor to my colleague Angelica that will uh, show you more in depth uh, our glossaries that are published on our website and uh, will show you also other important sections of your term.eu. Angelica, you have the floor. Okay, so good morning everyone. I am Angelica, the project coordinator with the Terminology Coordination Unit of the European Parliament, together with Sofia and Emanuela. Uh, I would like to briefly keep explaining how the Terminology Without Borders initiative is organized and how the website is structured. As Sofia previously said, we have 10 domains uh, and for each of them, there is a resource center. In every project, there is a collection of relevant resources that can be used by the participants, by the students, or by individual partners. Uh, so this is the resource center for the edu section. As you can see, they are basically glossaries, terminology databases, or dictionaries in a wide uh, in a wide range of language combinations. And uh, um, they they can be uh, useful for building up uh, the a new glossary or just for consultation. Uh, these resources are of public domain and they are accessible and downloadable also by whoever might want to consult them. This is for the URI section, and this is the one, uh, this is the one for the magic, medical section. Uh, then also the, uh, um, the second section that I would like to talk about is the collaboration section. Uh, this is a space dedicated to um, our previous partners, which has been created uh, with the aim of giving visibility to the university, to the students and to the professors participating in our terminology projects. So in this uh, section, which is accessible uh, click by clicking on the domain and here in terminology projects and collaborations, in this uh, section, you will have uh, uh, university projects and individual partners projects, um, different tables. Uh, here we can find some information concerning the university that has collaborated with us, um, along with a short description of the project itself, so the name of the subdomain, um, and the working languages the project was carried out in, the log of the university, and above all, a short biography of the professors, namely the coordinator, along with the term called coordinators, and a list of students uh, having participated into the project. So um, the goal here is really to put a spotlight on universities specialized in translation, terminology, and uh, linguistics in general. So besides for uh, every um, project, you have a, a, a button, a click here button, and uh, which leads you to the glossary, to the glossary itself. So uh, as we can see, uh, we can work with um, European languages as well as uh, non-member non state uh, languages. So for example, we have also Arabic. In some other, we have um, Georgian and uh, Malaysian as well, and so on. Uh, then uh, it is possible to participate 
in this project by consulting the cooperation tab here. So here we have the collaboration button through which a collaboration request uh, will uh, a collaboration request form will be open. It is possible here to fill in some basic information such such as the email address, the uh, language is the language is one wish to work in the domain and possibly the subdomain too and uh, some other information as well. Uh, so thanks to this tab, uh, the term code coordinators will be able to see the requests for universe of universities of professors or of individual uh, partners ready for launching a new project. Uh, then I would also like to talk about the agreement uh, button. So uh, in the same tab, collaboration button, you, uh, you can find uh, this uh, cooperation agreement uh, provided in order to make the collaboration with us official. Uh, so the, the possible partner will just have to click on the page and a Word uh, document will be opened. The same document can be used by uh, individual partners, uh, by universities or by organizations and agencies. Um, TermCard is also willing to sign any other form required by universities if needed. And besides, a certificate of achievement will be sent to the students and to the professors at the end of the project uh, if they want to have it. Uh, then uh, a third section I would like to talk about is the glossaries it's, uh, themselves. So uh, at the end of this whole cooperation, our partners send us back um, the glossaries they have created. The glossary is the final result of the whole project and glossaries are revised by the term called internal coordinators. And finally are published in the website. Um, so uh, as I said before, uh, we have as we have as Termcord has a wide uh, academic network and has we cooperate with universities from all around the world. Uh, the glossaries are obviously multilingual and the language combination is most of the time up to the university wishing to launch a new project. So. Uh, it is possible to work with European languages, as, as I said before, as well as with uh, languages of third countries. So here we have the Arabic language. Um, I would like to show you one glossary in um, Georgian language also. And um, and this is it. So thank you for the attention. And now I will leave the floor to uh, my colleague Emanuela, who participated in the Terminology Without Borders project uh, previously. Good morning, everyone. I'm Emanuela, and I'm a trainee at the Terminology Coordination Unit in Luxembourg. And I also coordinate some sub-projects in the context of terminology without borders. Before getting this trainship in Termocord, I had already had an opportunity to participate in some sub-projects as collaborator. My experience with terminology without borders started three years ago when, as a PhD student, I took part with my university group into Mare, FM and Food sub-projects. But let me show you a bit more in detail <clears throat> what such a collaboration means. Okay, uh, as already said, each domain uh, included in terminology without borders uh, is divided in different subdomains and collaborators who can be university or uh, individual collaborators may deal with one or more subdomains. Collaborating with Termocord uh, involves a series of activities thought to contribute to the main purpose of terminology without borders, which is that to provide better linguistic tools for an efficient and effective communication in the given domains. Collaborators may contribute by uh, extracting terms deemed relevant in such domains and that do not already exist in official glossaries and platforms like YATE, 
or they can collaborate by identifying linguistic equivalents of terms in different languages. Just to give you a visual example uh, of what collaborations and collaborators do, uh, let me show you one of the tables of uh, subdomain FEM, which includes three glossaries. Just become batch two. Well, um, in doing this, I'm trying to show you the process uh, behind the product, so by showing you the product. As you can see, the table, uh, which is the final product of the collaboration of many, includes different linguistic equivalents, for example, English, Spanish, Italian, um, of terms which are selected by means of terminology extractions conducting following specific criteria uh, thought to satisfy specific communication needs. If we click on the different languages, one of them, for example, uh, English at the bottom of the page, other results are shown uh, in each language, which are the product of another process, which is that of compiling terminology tables providing information about terms, definition, the context in which they occur, notes about terms, and references, of course. Um, such process is aimed at guaranteeing a wider comprehension of terms. Collaborators can also choose to work on different languages in addition to working on different domains or subdomains. Term code role is that to coordinate the whole project and collaboration, but opinions and suggestions uh, from collaborators are always welcome. Before concluding, let me say that universities and individual collaborators play an active role in Terminology Without Border project, contributing to help and support international communication and cooperation. Thank you for your attention.